Hello Vinyl Community! So it has been far too long since the last video, so it's about time. Just sometimes you know how it is, sometimes you just don't manage, you don't find the time. But of course I have uh, listened to uh, quite a lot of music in the last weeks. Um, and I always left uh, some of the albums out of the shelf uh, just to show them in a video before I put them back. So uh, let's have a look. Some of it uh, might be quite interesting. So this one here, uh, it's just something I purchased recently, uh, just for a couple of euros. Um, this is, uh, it's called uh, Direktschnitt Testgeräusche Baroque Musik, part one. Um, this is a sort of a industry record that was meant to, um, it was directed, well, basically at, uh, at uh, professionals working, for example, in radio stations. So it's a sort of a hi-fi uh, record. Um, actually, it would be interesting to find out when this came out, but let me have a look. It's 1977, yes. So the A-side contains uh, orchestral percussions, but all in a single manner. So every, every uh, segment is like 22 seconds, 30 seconds. Um, so the idea is that you can put this record on and uh, you can kind of uh, set up your, your, uh, your mixing gear in a studio, in a, in a radio station, etc. And you can kind of use it as an acoustic guideline. So your sound doesn't distort, for example. Now the B-side is completely different. The B-side contains three Baroque pieces. Uh, one by Jean-Baptiste Morel, the other one is by Georg Philipp Telemann, and the last one is by François Couperin. And I really like that. I like uh, especially 17th century Baroque music, also the pre-Bach pre Baroque music. And this is a, this is a nice pick because uh, especially like Jean-Baptiste Morel, you don't, you don't get this a lot. I mean, there's a lot of Baroque music uh, around, but uh, usually focusing on sort of the big names like Handel or Bach. So great, like this, nice sound. So the next album is quite an interesting treat. This is Flyover by Derek Higgins. Well, not only does the cover look quite evocative and interesting, also it has all this silver embossed letters here also it's the same on the back with the tracks um, and uh, it has quite an impressive disc which you can have a look at so this is sort of a beautiful multicolored vinyl it's very heavy and uh, Actually, I like this one. This is really beautiful. I like the green. This is nice psychedelia. Um, but it's not only a visually stimulating album. It also sounds really great. I mean, not only has it a very, uh, very... Uh, I mean, nothing about this music is vague, you know. This is not... Uh, this is not... Uh, this the sound is not hazy. This is a very clear sound and... Uh, the musical intentions are very clear. Um, it's not a. It's not an. I could not tell you what kind of category this is or genre. This is one of those albums that to defy any kind of categorization. I mean, this happens from time to time, right? I mean, there is. Um, I'm j I just had it here somewhere. Wait a moment. Oh yeah, here. This is Computer Energy by by Uwe Buschkötter. Um, now this is an album from early 80s, and it's the same case. I mean, it sounds completely different. Those two albums have nothing to do with each other, but it's the same kind of experience. When you listen to it, you kind of think like, "Oh, this what what, what am I listening to? What is what kind of genre is that?" But it's basically not not a, not a genre at all. It's just the it's the musician's personal genre, so so to speak. So why not? Um, I probably if I had to. If I had to compare it, and uh, comparing music is usually only a sign of, uh, of the lacking ability to find the proper words for it, but if I had to compare it, um, I would probably compare it with Nervenet by Brian Eno. It's a little bit like that. Um, 
well, let's say it's, 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 it's vaguely speaking, it's sort of in the same uh, acoustic realm, but it's not really similar. Um, it's cool, it's, 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 it's very groovy, it's uh, in part, uh, it has very, very progressive moments in it, but um, mostly it's a very, it's a very, it's a very good listen, it's, 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 a gr it's a good sound for driving in a car at night through a city, for example. It's very fitting. Uh, there are some. There are certainly some highlights for me. On the A side, uh, the fourth track is called Dree Bump, which is really wonderful. I mean, this is. Uh, if somebody told me this track is from the last uh, Harumi Hosono album or something, I would believe it right away. It's wonderful. Um, followed by a track called Perifer Peripheral Vision, which is really wonderful. Um, now on the B side. Um, there's a track called Flipped and Fate, both really great. The last track called Friday, uh, sort of beautiful sort of progression in it and great sound. So um, this is a good one. Um, I think as far as I know, I think this is kind of sold out by now. Um, but uh, you can still, um, you can still uh, get it on Bandcamp. Or have a listen, and um, I mean, if you're making if you're making mixes, if you mix if you put CDs together with with interesting music, this is an album where you probably would find some tracks that are uh, very useful for that. So this is Flyover by Derek Higgins. So the same day, I have listened to this album. Uh, I Advance Mast by Andy Summers and uh, Robert Fripp. Um, it's a great album. This came out in 1982 on AM Records. Uh, quite a cool stuff what these guys did back in the day. I mean, it's very focused. I mean, it's basically two, two guitar nerds playing, doing their thing. But, uh, I mean, there is a slight uh, touch of. Uh, of a uh, sort of a new wavy vibe in it, but um, uh, don't take it literally. Uh, it's mostly you could call this a uh, certainly a progressive album, but not in a classical progressive rock way. And it's not a it's not a very it's not a rock album uh, in a classical sense of the word. I would not think so. It has a sort of a musical humor to it. I would say. Um, it's a nice, nice thing to listen to. And uh, yeah, and there was of course this one, Lone Rhino by uh, Adrian Bellew. Uh, this was his first first album, his first solo record. Um, so again, 1982. I mean, the 80s started with kind of... Oh, look at these rhinos. I think that's drawn by someone from... Adrian Bellew's family, probably a kid. Well, I hope it was a kid. <laughs> um, yeah, this is pretty famous record. I don't think I need to say too much about it. Uh, probably half of the people here have it in their, on their shelf at home. So um, I just leave it at that. But uh, it's a nice lesson from time to time. Um, of course, a very... Uh, bold approach to guitar playing and uh, very interesting through and through. Might still be his best solo record. Some people think so. So uh, that's it for now and um, I will try to make uh, another video pretty soon. So uh, have a nice day and um, I think the spring is near.